No, but give me your truck. Back up. Get out. Get out. Get out. I just do what he says. Welcome to First Person Defender, where regular people come face to face with unknown attackers. And fight their way out. This is First Person Defender. You and your buddies are in a car, and there's a carjacking, but only one of you is armed. How does this play out, and how do you survive? Find out right now on First Person Defender. These force on force scenarios use training guns that fire non lethal projectiles. My name is Andrew, I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I work on uh, infrastructure projects in the area and I'm um, kind of the liaison between the, the engineering firms and, and the public. I've never been in a situation where I needed to, uh, to draw a gun, but uh, definitely situations where, where I'd be more comfortable carrying, absolutely. I have no idea what's gonna happen today, but I'm excited to find out what we're gonna do and, and see what I can learn. I would like for my, my experience here today to kind of propel me into getting my CCW and to, uh, to give me some, um, some tools and, and techniques that I can use um, you know, in the real world. Andrew's an interesting guy. He's got some military experience. He doesn't have his CCW permit. He has a wife who's pregnant. He's got kids on the way, and he's thinking about getting his license. Andrew doesn't have any training, but he has a great mindset. He's young. He's concerned about his personal safety. He's got friends that have CCW. He's got friends who are law enforcement. So he's been immersed in that climate, and I actually think he's gonna do pretty well. The question I have is, since Andrew's a nice guy, is he gonna to be too nice when things go bad? Andrew and his friends are heading out when approached by an unknown assailant. Can Andrew turn on the mean gene when his friends are in danger? Dude, uh, is my phone in here? Is it back there? I don't see it. Must have left my phone somewhere. Hey, man. Hey, hold up. Oh, did you find my phone? Yeah, you looking for your phone? Yeah. No, but give me your truck. Back up. Get out. Let me see you in here. Get out. Get out. I just do what he says. Index, index. What happened? Uh, so somebody came up uh, to the car, uh, pulled a gun on the driver. Um, the, he, he waved the gun at us, told us to get out. I got out, came around the back end, and uh, heard some gunshots, and I came around. Um, he was already, the bad guy was already in the, in the truck. And uh, I tried to approach, and so he shot backwards, I think, like, kind of over his shoulder, and I shot back. He kind of got you, too, huh? Yes, he did. Got you at least twice. Yeah, he got me twice. Is that all? Yeah, I think the, the arm and then, uh, yeah. One, one here. One in the gut. Okay. Damn. So what do you think about your tactics? I mean, you came, when did the gun come out? So I started reaching for it uh, when, he, when I saw him reaching for his. And uh, then I stopped. I knew that I knew uh, I didn't have like I wasn't in a good position. So I stopped, and he didn't seem to notice. Smart. So I got out, and as soon as I got out, I pulled the gun, and then I came around uh, the side. And then I, at that point, he was already in the truck. How's your heart rate right now? That's uh, pretty high. <laughs> I can tell yeah. you're you're a little checked up, <laughs> and that's good. That's what training. That's what this training's yeah. about. Is get you outside of your element. So, gun came out. You had your gun out. You heard the gunshot on this side of the truck, so he actually shot the driver, huh? Uh, yes, yeah, he shot the driver. So is that when you decided you had to do something? Yeah, yeah, so I guess I just, I kind of went, uh, reacted in instinctively. Um, but you know, looking back, like, I don't, I don't know if I would do that the same. I don't know if I would approach the driver, or the, the, the person, the assailant. Maybe the driver. I had to do it over again, let, let him go at yeah, that point. Maybe your approach on that side. Uh, I mean, I didn't expect to see him reach out the window and do this. No, I didn't either. <laughs> but it worked, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did. So you were right there in that kill zone. 
That's where we try to tell law enforcement officers not to come up. We tell them to come up on that, on the angle, you know, so we get more of an oblique, mm -hmm. if you're gonna. Yeah. What's something else you could have done? I don't know. Um, yeah, so coming at that angle, um, you can let him go at that point. If he's driving off, he's already shot somebody, you know, the threat's gone, then you can live with that. Um, if you can live with that, right. Yeah. Um, it could have also gone around the, the, the truck on the other side and tried to get, you know, in front of the truck because if he's coming to steal the truck, he's obviously going to have to get in the driver's seat. So maybe that would put me in a, uh, a better position, better yeah. angle to deal with him. Yeah, maybe go back from, from the passenger side and shoot at him. I mean, and there's something that, uh, you know, not a lot of people think about, and I think more are thinking about it these days, you know, shooting through the back window. Mm -hmm. You could shoot through the back window as long as you know everybody's gone out of there, and he's already shot one person. Yeah. And uh, if he goes and gets away, it's easy day for you, but what about the next person he runs into? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, the first cop that pulls him over, the first civilian that he runs into, he already shot one person, and now he's going to drive off. I think I'd have a hard time letting oh, him yeah. go. Oh, yeah, definitely. But it's an option. Mm -hmm. Anybody could absolutely do that. We'll do some training. We'll talk about some angles. We'll set some stuff up. We'll probably do the scenario again. All right. Maybe a little bit different. We could. All right, very All right. cool. If you want a gun you can pretty much carry anywhere, you're gonna have to take a look at the Ruger LCP Max. You know the LCP, very small pocket-sized gun, 380. Well, the Max holds more ammo. 10 plus one capacity, so it could be a pocket carry gun or a very small concealable gun in a holster. The Ruger LCP Max. All right, Andrew, we're back on this side. This is where you got out of the truck, and I've got a little target in there, kind of set up like it's a slice of the bad guy. I mean, I can just see a little bit of him, but uh, go ahead and kind of take a look in there for me and just tell me, how does this feel right here if he's getting in your truck? Yeah, this feels a lot better. Uh, you know, the second I just looked at that, it's like I should have should have stayed right here and, and engaged him from here. Well, it's a really cool spot too, because really we got a lot of good structure on the truck. There's a lot of stability. Plus there's cover for me to draw my gun. You know, I back out, I go. I'm coming up in here and I'm shooting him. I don't care if it goes through the seat, but I'm but right now, you know, it's like I'm aiming for a specific thing. If it was real life, man, I'd take him through the seat or whatever. All right, so you're in the seat. This guy's over in your doorway. I want you to just go through this slow and smooth. Get out, you're watching him, getting out. Keep your eyes on him because you don't know what he's gonna do. You get behind your cover, you pull your gun out, you look back in at what's going on. There he is, he's getting into the driver's seat. Take him. It's really not that hard. How do you feel from shooting back here? Uh, way safer. Uh, you've got great cover, you have a great angle. I mean, that, that really wasn't hard shot at all. We don't have to shoot center mass and we don't have to shoot to kill. What we wanna do is we wanna stop this guy. Now here's a question. You didn't think about shooting this guy until he shot your buddy, right? Mm -hmm. But he right. still has a gun and he's stealing your car. You don't know what he's gonna do with the gun, do you? No. Can you shoot him even if he doesn't shoot your buddy? I think in that situation, um, if he has a gun and he's, he's already pulled it on you, yeah, I think you could. That's something that the courts will decide, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna be safe there. Me, I don't, I don't have any problem with just covering him. I don't have a problem with covering mm -hmm. him. If you came here and you closed this door and you had your gun out and he starts, and he starts getting the car moving, man, maybe, maybe you don't shoot him, right? Think about it, look at that for a second. You're there, you've closed mm -hmm. the door, you get your gun trained on him. Mm -hmm. He hasn't shot anybody yet. Do I shoot him? I don't know. He may shoot the next person he encounters. So these are all decisions we have to weigh. I mean, it, yeah. how, so how would you feel on, if you got out of this and on the news later, you saw that there was another carjacking, it was a murder this time, and it was the guy you didn't shoot? Yeah, you feel pretty horrible that, that you didn't take care of it when you could have. I know, it would suck. Yeah. But we, we can't make those decisions until that day. We can't, we can't decide. We can't say we're just gonna shoot somebody, right? Yeah. We're gonna make a best decision we can. So let's do your other approach, all right? Okay. Let's change this up. I'm gonna move the target. We're gonna restage where you were, and then I'm gonna let you come in from a better angle. Okay. All right, so we're back here. The gun's out already, okay? When you look down here, 
I can see the target in the rear view mirror. So if I can see him, he can see me. So I want to get out of his view. Number one, I don't want to get run over by the car. Number two, I don't want him looking at me. I see my buddy down here. So what I'm doing is I'm crossing this distance and I'm coming out to where I think I'm okay. But I'm not gonna come collapse all the way into the side because I don't want him just reaching over his body and shooting at me. But I get to this point right here. Now if I hit that door pillar, man, I don't care. I'm shooting that area. Bullets are probably gonna go through that door. They may go through the door pillar. It's a harder part of the car. But I'm gonna put hits on him as fast as I can. Now I've got that target set up, so it's probably gonna react when you shoot it. So I'm gonna stay right here. You go back over there. When you start coming around with your gun, your eyes are on him and you're worried about getting out of that area. When you get over here, and there's nothing wrong with pointing your gun towards that car. Mm -hmm. Just as soon as you get to where you think you can take the shot, plant yourself and shoot him. Okay. Ready? Yep, ready. Eyes are there on the mirror. Go. When you think you can take him. Cool. Got more hits than misses, mm -hmm. and your misses were on the door anyways, okay? That's still his body in there. But now you're in a much safer spot. How hard is it gonna be for him to reach around and try to make a shot? Yeah, it's real unlikely. It's difficult for him, All right, especially a, while driving. You're in a safer spot, and if he keeps moving, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But he's not, he's probably not, because you just neutralized him pretty good. Yeah. So we're gonna do this scenario again. You know, we always change things up a little bit. Let's do it. You ready for that? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. The STK-100 from Rock Island Armory is a full-size pistol, 9 millimeter. but guess what? The frame is metal, and metal has a different feel when you shoot it. It just feels solid. But this one is the price of polymer in a metal frame. So go take a look at the STK-100 from Rock Island Armory. inside waistband, that's what IWB means. But this is a GLS, so that means grip lock system. I've got a micro compact here made for this holster. When I put that gun in the holster, it's locked in. When I obtain my master grip, what I'm doing is I'm depressing this locking system and I'm defeating it and the gun comes right out. When I get a new holster, I'll mount it up and I'll work with it empty for a little bit. So I'm gonna hook that over my pants. I've got it in my pants here. So I'm gonna work with it, grip, present, shot, reset. I like this holster because it's Kydex and it maintains its shape. It's very safe to reholster so long as I don't get anything in the trigger guard. So I work with this holster, I grip, present, make my shot. After I've done that enough, then I'm gonna load it up with live rounds. I'm gonna work live fire. Fingers straighten off the trigger, right into the holster. So live fire, simple, just like dry fire. Clear my cover garment, obtain my master grip, defeat that locking system, and fire a shot. Back in, finger straighten off the trigger. Back in, clear my cover garment so I don't get anything in that trigger guard. Again. I would keep working this single shot for probably three magazines, probably more than 30 rounds. Then I would probably increase my speed and my round count. But when you get a new holster, especially an inside the waistband holster, take the time, go to the range, learn how to use it safely. First Person Defender brought to you by Ruger and Colt. Andrew is once again faced with a difficult shot. 
Is he able to utilize his training and defuse the situation if another attack happens? I thought I left my phone back hey, there. Man. Is it not hey, back hey. there? Hey, hey, hey. Look, look, look. Oh, hey. Get, you got my phone? Nah, get your phone. What? How about I get your car? Move. Get, away. Stop. get out the car. Get, get out the car. All right, man, what happened that time? Uh, so kind of similar situation. Um, I guess the difference was I was in uh, the shotgun seat, it was around shotgun, uh, but the threat came up, got in the car. Um, I ran off, kind of put some cover, tried to get a little, little bit of ground between me and him. Um, and then I was able to take a shot between, uh, from the back passenger seat. I think I hit him, uh, I don't know, I felt like two or three times in the shoulder. Uh, then he got out, he ran around, he came around the back and he shot me in. I think I shot him then too. For some reason, he wanted to keep fighting, okay? <laughs> and that's okay, because honestly, I talked to the bad guy and he said, not only did you hit him when he was in the car, but then when he came out here after you, you hit him again. Yeah. So that was <laughs> he took some rounds. Good, good move on that. That was a little bonus. That was, yeah. that was more than I was looking for in this scenario. So let me ask you, how did you deal with your position at the front door? What was different there that you, that, that you can remember? Um, well, I knew, knew right off the bat, uh, like while I was in the truck, I wasn't gonna make a move for the gun. Cool, good um, thought. I felt like I definitely didn't have enough time to draw. So I got away. Uh, I tried to put a little space between me and him and uh, very, very similar. So I moved backwards, uh, kind of got the, uh, that rear pillar of the, the truck between me and him. And then I just got to where I could just see his shoulder. I didn't think he could see me and I uh, got some shots off that way. So you Instant. saw good sights? Mm -hmm. You had you had some target? He didn't see it coming, did he? No, he didn't. Good. What else, anything? No, just it's a lot, it was a lot easier. Um, it was less movement. I felt like I didn't have to go around. I didn't have to get behind the truck when, you know, I was worried about him the first time backing out. Um, and just better, better angle and better, better picture. Better element of surprise, yeah. better use of cover, a yeah. lot of better things. Yeah, absolutely. Did you get shot? Only when he came around, uh, I ran out of uh, rounds. Did he get one on you? Where yeah. did he hit you? Yeah, uh, he hit me in the stomach. Somewhere. Really, you think but, yeah. he got you one, huh? Yeah, he got me one. All right. Yeah, but that was after I'd, you know, shot him three times, so. Chances are, if you put yeah. that many rounds in him in the truck, he's gonna be so surprised and so disoriented, he's probably gonna get out and run yeah. away. So you used one of the train techniques. You used the element of surprise, you used cover. Um, you got hits on target. Were you more comfortable this time? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, just going in kind of with a, a general idea of what it is I wanted to do and how to go about it made a huge world of difference. Okay. Front seat threw you off though for a second, huh? A little bit, yeah. And you, you said, I, I knew I couldn't draw my gun right then and there. Mm -hmm. Fine, that's fine. He told you to get out, get out. Get out, move the cover, get your gun out, right? Yeah. Doesn't mean you have to go to guns. Yeah, no, uh, they're, you know, especially being in the front seat, when, when he came up, he was looking right at me, um, right over the driver. So yeah, I thought it was better to wait. Cool. Well, I thought you did a really good job. I hope you learned something. Yeah, and, definitely did. And I can't wait for you to get your CCW. Yes, sir. You'll, yeah. be, a, you'll be a better trained citizen <laughs> out, out there in the environment.
Hey, thanks for watching First Person Defender. Did you know there are more ways to follow what Gun Talk's doing? Like GunTalk.com, GunDealio.com, the Gun Talk Podcasts, and the Gun Talk email newsletter. Follow us, interact with us. Thanks for watching.